Hello, I'm Helen from Journal with Purpose and welcome to my latest YouTube video. Today I'm going to do some art journaling and I wanted to talk a little bit about being able to bring some meaning into your art journal pages. I think often when you see other people's art journals, they can be so abstract and it can be hard to understand it, perhaps what the purpose and meaning was behind them. But as long as you're putting meaning into your own pages, I don't think it matters at all whether other people know what they're about. Mine often may give some kind of idea, perhaps through a quote or a few words that are added onto it. But often the writing is either quite hidden or obscure. But I know also that some people struggle to know how to put meaning into their own pages. So that's something I wanted to share with you today. I have quite a few art journals on the go. These two are both Dilutions art journals and this one I've been using for the Wonderlust classes this year. I've been absolutely loving it and trying out all sorts of different techniques and styles in here. The one that I'm going to be working in today is one that I've made myself and I've just made this in the same way that I do with normal junk journals. So the paper I'm using is actually quite thin um, so I'm going to be putting some protection onto those before I get going. But I do have a video on YouTube of how to make a junk journal and I've just covered this in some beautiful wrapping paper that was designed by an illustrator who actually lives quite close to me. So I mentioned wanting to put some protection on these pages. So for that, I'm going to add a layer of gesso. So I've got this big tub here by Windsor and Newton because I tend to use quite a lot of gesso. And I'm going to cover, I think, nearly all of this left-hand page and then quite a bit of the right. I'm going to go for a reasonably thin layer because I still would like some of the details to be showing through. But gesso is certainly a really handy medium if you want to work in thinner journals like this. With my Dilutions journals, I often don't have to really worry too much about putting gesso down first, though it is quite useful for adding a bit of tooth to your page. So there are times when I use it for that as well, not just for thickening and protecting the pages. I also use gesso as an alternative to white acrylic paint if I've got lots of white that I want to add because it usually ends up being much more economical. So you can see there I'm just adding those thin layers so I can still see that music sheet behind it. And I'm going to do exactly the same on this side. But I like quite like those leaves on there. This is one of the printables from my Patreon printable bundle. So again, I'll still be able to see some of those ledger paper marks behind it. I'm just going to leave those little leaves there at the bottom. And I'm now just going to very quickly get that layer dried off. So now that's dry, the first thing I want to do is actually get some thoughts out of my head. And I very often do this as the beginning part of my art journaling. And sometimes that then ends up being entirely hidden. And sometimes you can see little bits of it peeking through. For me, that doesn't matter so much as just the process of getting some thoughts out. And I'm going to use pencil for this, but anything would be fine. If you're going to be using a wet medium on top, it's worth just remembering if you are if you use a pen that is water soluble, that's going to run and bleed. But sometimes that can give a really interesting effect too. So 
So as you can see, that is barely legible, which for me is perfect, particularly if I'm wanting to get some quite personal thoughts out. And other ways of making things illegible is by writing almost overlapping each of the lines so that it's really difficult to be able to see those words. So if you have personal thoughts that you don't want anybody else to read, I definitely recommend this as a route. You could then collage on top of it, add acrylic paint, anything you like, um, but I'll be actually using watercolour today. So I talked about bringing meaning into your pages. Well, firstly, adding some of that writing and getting your thoughts out can really help to make it a more personal experience for you. But also I want my pages to be inspired by a trip I took to the beach yesterday. I actually wasn't really in the mood for going, so I'm really pleased my partner talked me into it. It was just one of those days I think I woke up feeling a bit tired. It was just beautiful and it was exactly what I needed. We took a little dog Barney down there. So I want to capture this in my art journal. And this will end up being really quite abstract and nobody else would know what it means, but that is fine. For me, I just want to capture the colours and the feeling of when we were just sat there on this rock looking out to see. It was just beautiful. So I am going to use the colours in this as inspiration. So I've got different colour blues, whites, browns, almost yellowy colours. So I'm going to use my set of watercolours from Kurataki Ganzai Tambi. And I really don't want to overthink this. I just want to get some beautiful colours down on this left hand page. So I'm going to start off with this really beautiful blue and I'm just going to start applying these layers onto my page and I'm not following the lines on the photos I took or anything like that. I really just want to bring the essence of it I guess onto these pages. And I'm going to reach for another blue and I'm doing this quickly. I'm not drying any of the layers in between. And I'm just alternating the directions a little bit. And just really adding the colors wherever feels right. I quite like to bring some of this lighter, this kind of light yellowy, almost brown colour. And again, bringing it across both pages. I do want to leave a little room to be able to add some writing on this page. And I think one other thing I'd like to do is use an acrylic ink as well. So I've got this sepia from the De La Rowney range. And I'm going to bring, just drop a little bit of that into some of the colours and let it play. So I've got a bit more contrast in there. So I'm trying to drop that kind of into the areas that I can see are still wet. And then perhaps to bring a bit of movement into these pages, going to add just some water. 
because there was so much movement, the clouds in the sky, the sea, the waves breaking. So just to bring a little bit of a sense of that movement onto my page. So I'm just adding the water and I'm going to let it kind of drip down to the bottom. And I may also just mop up any little bits which are going into the centre of that book there. Just try and prevent it going through onto the other pages, but I don't really mind. I can always cover it with gesso. So just letting those water droplets slowly travel down my page. I'm just going to pick up any of the excess and that's just got to the bottom of the gesso there so just going to soak a little bit of that up and then any places where I've got a little bit more than I might like I'm just going to lift off and I'm also going to use some of my Neo colours and these are the Neo Colour 2s, so they're water soluble. So I'm actually going to dip mine straight into the water and just add some little marks. Really just wherever I feel guided to on my page. I often think it's fun dragging them through some of the other colours while they're still wet. And I might bring in a little bit of this kind of paler brown as well. And for me, even the process of this is just taking me back to the relaxation that I felt once I was down on the beach. So at this stage, I'm now going to get this layer all dry. So I now feel on my pages that I've got that sense of movement. I feel I've got the colours there that I saw. I want to bring a little bit more of a feeling of peace. And I'm going to use some Royal Talons. Uh, this is titanium white acrylic paint. I'm just going to use my fingers to bring that into a few areas. The feeling of peace was just wonderful when I was there. So just something I was keen to bring into my pages. So hopefully this is beginning to sh show you that you don't need to be great at drawing, painting, anything like that. It's just finding ways of being able to capture some really special moments and feelings in your journal. And as I mentioned, it really doesn't matter whether it makes sense to anybody else, as long as it enables you to either process something or document something in the pages of your journal. So I'm really happy with that. I feel that white's helped to capture the breaking of the waves, the clouds in the sky, and just brought a little bit more peace onto those pages. So again, I'm gonna get that dried off. Now that I've got to this stage, there are a few other decorative elements that I want to add. There were quite a lot of seagulls and other birds flying overhead when we were there. So I want to bring some of those onto the page. I'm never worried with the stamping, whether it comes out perfectly. Again, for me, I'll know what they were and why they're there. And these two stamps were from London Gifties. And for that, I've used black stays on jet black ink. I also want to bring a little hint of the rocks. And I've got these Versa Magic chalk inks. This one's Sahara Sand. 
and I thought these little imperfect shapes were great. If you don't have the stamps, these just doing some simple birds in black pencil, doing some little, using a coloured pencil maybe for a hint of the rocks. And I might just add a few up here as well. And then I want to add some stamping here. I've got this vintage alf um, alphabet stamp set. And when I was sat on that rock looking out to sea, I think kind of the first thought that went through my head was, and breathe. And I thought that would be perfect to add to these pages. So I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes now just stamping that in one of these white patches. So I've finished adding the stamping. I also added some little dots over the other side because I took some uh, pictures and videos while I was on the beach. And I think I shared them on my Instagram stories with the actual and breathe dot dot dot. So it felt like a really lovely way of being able to bring that onto my pages. So I mentioned I also want to be able to add a little bit of writing. So I'm going to do that on this right hand page here. And for this, I'm using a black Muji gel pen. I added just a few little lines there. I've written, I was hesitant to go, tired, but the air refreshed my soul and the waves breathed fresh life into me, grateful for this moment. So I don't tend to go into lots of detail in my art journal, just a few little lines to capture how I was thinking and feeling and making sure that's documented in my pages. So kind of completely different to this, this is where I tend to do more long form writing on perhaps more factual on what I've been up to each day, where we've gone. I've got the photographs in there, which I absolutely love. But for me, this was a really lovely, creative and expressive way to get that exact same moment down into my art journal pages. So I hope if you've been a bit unsure of ways to bring that meaning into your art journal, that this helps to give you some ideas. As always, I want to say a massive thank you to everybody who's joined me over on Patreon. I really hope you enjoyed this. I hope you're doing well. I look forward to speaking with you really soon in my next video.